turns out that more things affect the pH of an aqueous solution than just what we immediately categorize as acids and bases. Something like a salt will affect the solution by a secondary effect. After the salt dissolves into ions, those ions can then react with the water in the solution and produce either H plus or OH minus. So cations may cause acidity and anions may cause basicity. So there are a few cases for what we may have as a cation. These are always the positively charged ions. If we have a weak acid for our cation, then that will have an acidifying effect on the solution. So here we have ammonium, NH4+, and it reacts with water to produce its conjugate base, ammonia, and hydronium. So since it produces this hydronium, or we can think of it also as H plus in the solution, then it's going to acidify the solution. We can ha also have this effect when we have metal cations with a significant charge on them. They will react with the water and can do something interesting like this, where we form a complex with the water molecules. But for one of these water molecules, we split it apart and take the OH, leaving the H plus in solution. So putting this iron three plus in water is going to produce H plus, which we can also think of as hydronium. So that will also make the solution acidic. We can also have an ion which doesn't have any effect. And that happens when we have an ion which is conjugate to one of our strong bases. So for instance, sodium hydroxide, if we put that in water, it will generate Na plus and OH minus. Now we know because this is a strong reaction that there's no reverse reaction. Well, what that must mean is that the Na plus does not react with water to produce NaOH, that would be the reverse reaction. And that would mean that we had a, a weak base instead of a strong base. So by way of, of recognizing that these ions go together with our, our strong bases, then we can know they don't react with water and therefore are not going to affect the acidity of the solution. The anions likewise can have an effect on the acidity of the solution. If we have an anion that acts as a weak base in the solution, because it's the, the conjugate of a weak acid, then it will react with water and take a proton, leaving behind OH minus in the solution. And since it increases the OH minus concentration, that is gonna make the solution more basic, less acidic. And just like with the cations, if we have an anion that's conjugate of a strong acid, that's gonna have no impact. And same reasoning as before, a strong acid completely dissociates. And so for example, this HCl dissolves completely to make H plus and Cl minus ions. And these ions do not have a, a reverse reaction. There's no reaction where the Cl minus will react to produce more HCl because then we would have an equilibrium. And for that reason, we can make the insight that this Cl minus does not react with water. And so when we see it in a salt, we know it's, it's not gonna do anything when it's released into the solution. So the cumulative effect now is going to be if we have an anion that reacts and the cation doesn't do anything, it's gonna be a basic solution. We've generated OH minus, we haven't done anything else. Conversely, if only the cation reacts and we've generated H plus, we haven't done anything else, so it will be a sick. If neither of them reacts, we haven't done anything else, it's gonna remain neutral at a pH of seven for pure water. And if both of them react, well, well now we have kind of an interesting case here. The anion is producing OH minus, the cation is producing H plus, whether our solution becomes acidic or basic is gonna depend on which produces more. 
And so the way that we're gonna gain insight in that is we're gonna need to look up or calculate the equilibrium constants. So whichever one has the greater equilibrium constants is gonna be the dominant effector of the solution. So if the equilibrium constant of the acid is greatest, then we'll wind up with an acidic solution. The equilibrium constant of the base is greatest, then we'll wind up with a basic solution. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out what the effect will be of a couple of salts in aqueous solution. We'll, we'll try this for potassium bromide, and we'll try this for ammonium hypochlorite. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to write down our dissociation equation. Doing this for potassium bromide, it's just going to dissociate in solution to produce K plus ions and Cl minus ions. And so now the question is what each of these ions does to the solution, and then what the cumulative effect is going to be. Well, for our K plus, we recognize this as being part of KOH, one of our strong bases, that must mean that the K plus ion has no reaction with water, and therefore it will have no effects. And same thing for the Br minus. We recognize this from hydrobromic acid, which is one of our strong acid. And since Br minus does not react with water, then it's not going to change the pH in any way. So neither ion does anything, and the overall effect will be it doesn't change the pH of our solution. It's going to remain neutral. Well, what about the ammonium hypochlorite? So that will dissolve to make ammonium and hypochlorite are, are two ions. Now ammonium, we saw this earlier, this is a weak acid. So it's the conjugate of ammonia. And it, when it reacts with water, it will produce ammonia and H3O plus. So since it's increasing the hydronium concentration, that means it's acidifying our solution. CLO minus is a weak base. It's the conjugate of our um, hypochlorous acid. And so this is going to be basic. It's going to take a proton from the water and increase the OH minus in the solution. Well, this is in conflict. This is acidifying the solution. This is making it more basic. So what actually happens, in order to, to know that, we're going to have to compare the equilibrium constants for this acid and this base. We can start by looking up our ammonium. Uh, we look it up, we find it has an acid dissociation constant of 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Now we can work on the hypochlorite. It may be when we look at our table that we don't find it. It's more likely that we will find the conjugate acid, the hypochlorous acid, and the Ka of that is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 8. We can use that to find the Kb of its conjugate, the ClO minus. So Ka times Kb equals K water. So our Kb is going to be K water divided by the, the Ka of the conjugate. And that gives us 2.9 times 10 to the minus 7 as our Kb for the hypochlorite. Well, since this is several orders of magnitude larger than this, then that means that this ClO minus is going to be the dominant effector of the solution. And our solution is going to be basic in nature. 